Welcome to RVing in New England, the nation's only forum that puts you on stage with some of the biggest names in the RV industry. And now your hosts, John DiPietro and Bob Zagami. Okay, which one are you? Are you Bob or are you John? I'll be the other one. John, because I'm going to have a bad attitude and I'm going to be very cantankerous. <laughs> and so. I'll pretend that this strawberry refresher from Starbucks is a smaller glass of Jack with one ice cube. Yeah, that's quite, but, a, uh, quite a good pour there. That's a well, fucking pour. Hey, that, I gotta let you know that John just texted me back. He doesn't have a link to the show, so if you want to email him a link, you I might can even bother to join us. Do another one. Copy that. Uh, so why don't you just let everybody know what's going on here? Yes, and I'm gonna let everyone know what's going on. So ten minutes ago, I got a call from Bob Zagami. He doesn't have the internet signal that he thought he was gonna have. And uh, so he asked me to jump on the show and kind of help out a little bit until we can get John up and running. And I want to say thanks to everybody who's joined the show already. Uh, good evening from Central Florida, Walter Swenson, Jerry Plant. Good evening from Cape Cod, Jim Roy. Good evening, gentlemen. Our hearts go out to you and your neighbors out there in, uh, in the middle of Maine. Uh, it's an amazing thing yeah, that has happened. Tough, in, tough week tough, there. Yeah. Tough scenario. And you guys have been tough as nails, the whole group. Um, is it your son that's a police officer? Yeah, he's been helping out throughout the whole thing. Um, uh, Tony Barthel, on time, and now half my beer is gone. Oh, you poor thing, you. <laughs> I, I think you got time. And we got John DePietro just joining the show. Okay, Quiet. John. The magic <laughs> of the internet. The magic of the internet. <laughs> You're here. We're all here. You know, I've been here. I've been waiting for a while. I don't know where the heck Zagami is. I, I think I, oh, he might not make it. Um, he's, I guess, on the road in Georgia, and the internet in the hotel is not up to snuff. He yeah. can make phone calls, but that's about it. I told him get so. out of the hotel and, um, you know, go yeah. somewhere else. Uh, but, yeah. Well, he's got anyway. 48 minutes, uh, 58 minutes left to go. But... Um, <laughs> Yeah, we were just doing some quick introductions, and uh, uh, it says, John, turn your captioning off. Uh, Jerry, I think that's not by person. I think that might be yeah. on the viewer end of it. Uh, but we did get from Jim Roy. Yes, his son, youngest son is a Monmouth police officer. We were acknowledging what happened in, um, uh, in, in Lewis, Maine, a week ago, and uh, tough, tough time. So, uh, Jim, hopefully your son is okay, and... Uh, they're God all going to need to, yeah, to decompress, but uh, just you know, yeoman's uh, duty uh, there. Yeah. Uh, let, let's talk about that. And this is not political talk, but this right. is kind of like, you know, the, the situation that the world is in right now. You know, we had the thing up in Maine, up in Lewiston, and I've been to Lewiston many, many times. Many times, so, many times. Yeah. Camped out in that Walmart there that was um, uh, mentioned in many of the news articles, been up there for the balloon festival. Oh. And, um, you know, Lewiston is, I mean, I think Maine is the safest state in the world, in, in the country for for gun safety, from what I'm told, and probably has a very high ratio of people that have guns. So it's not a question of should people have guns or not or, or whatever, which, which so many people think. But, you know, there are a vast number of people out there with um, personal issues, and that seems to be the mm -hmm. case with this um gentleman who was the gunman here so you have that you have the issue taking place over in israel and then last saturday night at worcester state college yep there was a double shooting one person dead one person um okay still looking for the for the um gunman mm -hmm. surprised you can still say gunman okay and, and then Last night, there was the shooting in Salem, Massachusetts. And Salem State. Salem yep. State. And it was a Worcester kid Yep, that was part of the yep. um, basketball championship yep. team, the state championship last year. So the question is, what's this got to do with RVing? Well, I think everybody who's ever RVed will tell you that when they're in a campground, just like that picture that 
popped up behind me. They get um, a peaceful, easy feeling. Yeah. You know what? You, you forget the outside world completely. Exactly. And when you're driving in your RV, I know I've said that to my wife so many times when she said, um, you know, don't you mind this traffic? I said, once I'm in this motorhome, it's like I'm in a different mindset. It's a cocoon. Yeah. It, it, it is a cocoon. switch, your blood pressure's down. Yep, yep. exactly. Yep. You just sit yep. up there and you just wait you till know. you get to wherever you're going. Yeah. A lot of people say when they drive over that Bourne Bridge on Cape Cod or the Sagamore Bridge, they get halfway over the bridge, their, their blood pressure um, corrects itself. And the same thing when you're driving up to Maine, when you go over that bridge from Portsmouth. New Hampshire, they're around 95. Yeah. You know, yeah. so that but but let's let's ask our audience um when they're rving are they kind of like um not immune to what's going on in the world but does does rving calm their nerves so you know what this show is all about our audience and um you know uh let, let's look at some of the things we've got here bernie uh, did we do our sponsor yet we have not, not. no okay so we're gonna put okay. Leave that up to you if you don't mind. Yep, I've got that. We Bring it, it up right now. Have it there, otherwise I know it by heart. Uh, there we go. We want to thank our friends at Seacoast RVs, Route 1 in Saco, Maine, for sponsoring this show. They have crop park models. They have elevation park models. They have Winnebago um, motorized as well as Winnebago towables. So if you're looking to um, get propane, to get parts, they've got a great store. And when you walk in, you'll see there are three or four black labs um, ready to greet you. And um, even though the uh, RVing season, if you will, is slowing down a little bit in New England right now, that store is open year round. And if you need winterizing, you know, the funny thing is last weekend we took the RV out. Bill, you, you can take that slide down. But we took the RV out uh, after I had already had Ryan hadley winterized it a week ago today uh it was so nice during the week that i said we're going out so we went out and um had the air conditioning on then the next morning had the heat on but for anybody who may have not winterized bernie did you get any bernie or bill did you get any snow flurries today we did not yeah we did not but our our neighbors did just a little bit southwest of us you know, yep. kind of uh, in Keene area and, you know, in the the Pepperell, maybe Fitchburgy. There was a bunch of snow right. showers out there. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it was right. around 495. So between Westboro and yep. Worcester, Shrewsbury area is where yep. the, the flurries ended. So they know it was out in Western Mass because Frank Palanche, I don't know if he's on with us tonight, but he, he is. sent. Oh, there he is. Frank is yep. right there. He's on. Frank came on. Frank sent the picture out on Facebook today. What's that stuff falling from the sky? <laughs> and at about 10 o'clock this morning, as I was driving, uh, a few flakes hit the windshield. So, hey, you know, Walter ended up answering your question. If you don't mind, let's take a peek yeah, at yeah. that. Yep. Yeah. Uh, you want to start at the top or you want to start at the bottom, Bernie? What do you want? Oh, well, I already kind of touched base with most of those, but we can get back to Jerry okay, put quite a okay. few in. So uh, the... The always on communication makes it a challenge to disconnect completely, but camping definitely helps get you disconnected and relaxed. So to maybe paraphrase your question a little bit, um, let's ask again, you know, you know, what is it and, and how do you feel when you start that camping process, right? So that's the question that's out there tonight. But we can get back into Jerry LaPlante because he made a comment, a country divided. Um, his father is from Lewiston as well as his father's side of the family. And uh, so, yeah, this is uh, some it, it is a it's a definitely a tumultuous time out there. And I think our being is even that much more important as a result of the turmoils, the chaos that seems to be kind of happening more and more as of late you know and i i hope it's not a trend that continues yep. i hope it's a there's a ebb to this flow of yep. turmoil but, but yeah you know i mean it, it's not a funny situation but it's ironic that um i run into a lot of rvers at the campgrounds and if i see a southern plate 
I'll casually ask them, are you packing? And um, 90% of the time, the answer is yes. So my theory is this, if any gunman tried to um, carry out some crazy crap at a campground, there would be enough fellow campers that would they'd uh, react. Yep. They'd end it. Yep. They'd end it. Quick. Oh yeah, and 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 those people aren't crazy. They're just prepared. You know, <laughs> there. there Zagami's hey. here from his Motel hey. Six hotel room. You're looking kind of cute there, Bob. Yeah, it's buffering. Yeah. <laughs> that hey. was a 1990s internet term. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. we have Jim Roy. He says my wife decompressed while camping. I am still answering emails and Facebook and messages uh, for work. So at least, you know what? Sometimes I feel relaxed just when I know well, my band, wife is band relaxed. The is terrible. Am I killing you guys? No. You're, you're not killing us. Nope. We're, we're all hanging in there. Yep. Yeah. yeah, your head hasn't moved in about 20 seconds. But other than that, you're doing yeah. fine. But you know what? Um, with Jim Roy mentioning about his wife decompressing, we were – with them back in August up in uh, Booth A. And um, they had a rally with a group of uh, vintage trailers, the mini trailers that are only like 17, 18 feet long. But interestingly, what we did was a bunch of about 12 or 14 strangers just got together around the campfire. And um, a couple of the people had well, they're up north, so they had guitars. If they were down south, they would have had, they would have been guitars, um, <laughs> Get playing some songs. And um, suddenly, you know, that's played. fourteen sudden new friends. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. I and, love and, Jerry's uh, comment on the subject here. Do you want to pull that up? Does yeah, we we did a state park in Pennsylvania with no dish and no cell. I was happy. My wife was not. So. <laughs> There's, there's, all, there's always a give and a take there, right? No dish yep. and no cell. I was happy my wife. Okay, well. Yeah. Whatever. I can um, see that. You know, so Peggy. Oh, Peggy and Tony are on. Are they, are they in the same place? Peggy and Tony, are you guys in the same location? We'll jump back to Michelle's in a sec. Yeah. 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 Cold, Cold temps is why I look for hookup sites. Run the heat. Yeah. You know what? I don't. I, I personally tell me if I'm crazy with this, but I don't like falling asleep with the heat on because it's propane driven heat. And I'm I'm not 100 percent confident in going to sleep with. Um, is it propane? Yeah. Yeah. Well, when it was would the be last time or, you your, or electric. Yeah. When was the last yeah. time you had your furnace inspected? Because. The only time you're going to get any gas in there is that if, you know, the burn chamber has a leak in it, you know, so. Um, but it is very dry and you yeah, will oh, wake dry. up incredibly yeah. dried out there. Yeah. 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 And another so, thing I don't, I don't like doing. Oh, oh, Randy's already in Vegas. Wow. He's already in Vegas. Well, he's uh, a party animal a week early. Zagami's there next week. But um, another thing I don't like doing and, and audience, tell me if you think um being too much of a baby on this is that I don't like going to sleep with the air conditioner on if it's on by generator because there are fumes and you know I've had friends say oh don't worry but you know Mark Polk is a very respected person and he said he has been a um, aware of many people who have died during the night by carbon monoxide poisoning in their RV, um, even though they felt that the wind was blowing in the opposite direction. Well, Take again, it's to, to, to Jerry's point here, too, that the rigs today have a CO detector and, and right. the propane detector. Right. And presumably in the middle of summer, if you are running in air conditioning, you will have the windows closed. It, it doesn't make sense to have them open and air conditioned. Right. Yep. But uh, that would keep that most of that the, the fumes out but um yep yep. yeah yeah I mean, I yep. that, that's a good point though john for sure so uh, let's talk about michelle we kind of bypassed her yeah back. we'll back up to her right yeah yeah uh, yeah you know, being a single just... woman who's rv solo a lot caution was always the top of my mind so yep. 
and, and she did she went cross country a couple times yep uh, or at least from arizona to new england um you know and again people don't know from the outside whether how many people are in that normally but if somebody wants to intrude um they can intrude i mean here here's how crazy i am now i don't have a gun but i have a um a pack of bear spray oh but ironically because i could buy that in maine or new hampshire without having a permit <laughs> i still have it in the plastic you know in the plastic thing that hung on the hook hung on the hook in the store with so by the time it. I was yeah. able to break the plastic, get the stuff out, and subdue the perpetrator, he or she would have already taken everything they wanted and been halfway across the country. Before. Well, and it is a big topic for Janine Pettit with uh, Girl Camper. And right. Having done that, we've we've uh, when we did the the Girl Camper National Expo online, there were three or four sessions on exactly that topic, and and the yep. articles every so often. And yes, uh, Jerry is correct. There are a number of single women YouTubers that also address this. And, yeah, yeah. But they right. will tell you to take it out of the uh, the plastic wrap. <laughs> you yeah, definitely yeah, want to. I guess if you're going to have some plastic. sort of defense, you know, self defense, you know, a piece of equipment, you better have it accessible and usable because, by the like you said, by the time you get to it, you know, you're going to cause yourself more trouble than not, and probably squirt yourself in the face in the in the meantime. So. Yep, yep, yep. There are a couple of interesting comments here. So, uh, Dante, yeah. don't tell me about Daytona being chilly. Okay. Now, we should <laughs> it's all tell relative. you, the reason Zagami is in Atlanta tonight is the same reason that he missed the show two or three weeks ago because he drove from Naples, Florida to Indianapolis to see the Eagles. It was a uh, birthday present for his wife. You know, and since the real uh, Eagles, not not the Philadelphia Eagles, right, right, the band. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, the interesting thing is they're on their third or fourth farewell tour, and um, he wants to make sure this is not the last one. So they drove up there. What he didn't tell me is that the tickets that he got were in the last row of the arena. Oh my gosh! <laughs> okay, so basically, what he did was he watched the show on a big screen TV. You know those big screens that they have on the side of the show. Okay, and the the interesting part is that the voice usually doesn't even line up with the with the video. You know what I mean, Bill? Yeah, it, it <laughs> takes a moment to get to the. Yeah, there's yeah, a couple so, of seconds. Delay. But but that last row, he should be able to get plenty of secondhand smoke, and it's not cigarette smoke. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> with the Eagles, oh yeah, you'll you'll be. Uh, well, and ironically, uh, when when you're in a, an arena and you're in the last row of the of the three hundred section, uh, I would not want to get up during the show because the, the pitch of like, those seats. Yeah, you're going to feel like you're going to tumble down. Yeah. You're, you're climbing a ladder. So he found out there was a show tomorrow night in Atlanta. Okay. And found out somebody that he knows that had floor seats. Okay. So he didn't tell me how much he paid for the floor seats, but he said right after he came out of the bank getting a home <laughs> equity loan, I told him, I said, Zagami. He goes, wow. I said, do you know if when you go to an Eagle show and your seats are on the floor, you don't use the seats. No, you stand the entire you time. You stand the whole two hours. Yeah. Okay. And he said last time there was an opening act that played for an hour, then an hour between opening act and Eagles. And, oh, wow. Uh, so he said the show didn't start till 10 o'clock. And uh, so I said, you better bring good shoes because the seat is going to be uh, irrelevant tomorrow. So we'll see. But he'll have a good time. He, he's acting like a uh, Taylor Swift. What do they call them? The Swifties that, that yeah, chase. Right. They right. chase the the right. uh, the band around. Yeah. 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 Groupie. He's a groupie. groupie. Yeah. Yeah. But ironically, this is this is the funny thing. Um, Saturday night, there is a group called Seven Bridges, which is an Eagle tribute band where I know somebody in the band and um, they're playing down in Connecticut. It's a Friday and Saturday night. So we're, we'll see the Eagles tribute band. And I've heard them before. They are as good as is any, the real deal. Any yeah. is, you know, again, you don't see um, Joe Walsh up there, but 
nevertheless, it'll be quite a show. What do we got here? What do we got for comments here? Uh, we got a lot well, of comments. Yep. We were back on the discussion of <laughs> what you bring for protection. Yeah. Yep. Don and Pat brought that up. But then uh, Jerry's telling us why you have your uh, bear spray in wrapped plastic because you do have your grandkids. <laughs> Yeah, go. but I have it up so, high. There's no. I just looked at it the other day when I was trying to find you my. Just second, Velcro second. it next to the door. Yep, always yep. there. Yep. 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 Well, hey, the other night. What's this? Yeah. The other night, yeah. uh, again, coming back from our unexpected trip, we we went from Worcester to Foxwoods, and at Foxwoods now, any of our RVing friends here that have that have traveled to Foxwoods lately in their RV. They don't have the same RV lot that they had a couple of years ago because they're building a that great new. lodge yep. mm -hmm. there. Yep. Mm -hmm. So they oh, moved wow. us way down to the uh, western end of the property in a lot that, um, you know, is where the buses, when they used to have shuttle buses there, yep. are. But you can't walk up to the building because you have to walk through the woods. So they, they, they have a security car that takes you back and forth. But... You're in an area because of the laws in Connecticut, people can park an RV for 30 days uh, and nobody can do anything with it. There, there are some real, there were several RVs, travel trailers that were there with blue tarps on them that you did not look like you wanted to be around those people. So my wife was a little fearful of that. And last time we went back again this weekend, a couple of them had been taken away already. Um, but again, even if you're doing casinos, you got to be cognizant of where you're parking because um, not everybody has the same values that you have. So, so Jim cool. Roy asked if uh, Bob was a deadhead back in the day during the touring of the Grateful Dead. And I'm saying, well, I'm not sure if he was a deadhead, but he was, he's definitely a squatch head now. So he's definitely uh, following you and keeping an eye on everything that you do in your business. So, yeah, he's a, he's a good squatch head. Yeah. Now, Don Hawes, my 20 gauge and my nine millimeter are very good deterrents. <laughs> okay. He's in Texas. Now, yeah. one thing I found out in Texas is they let you carry, but they don't let you conceal it. So, you, so if you get stopped by the police and you have a weapon in Texas, by the time the police get from the cruiser to your car, you have to have that gun back out on the front seat. Wow. So it makes it easier to shoot the police, I guess. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, Dante's he's he's packing <laughs> plus hornet spray. So it doesn't yeah, have plus to be hornet spray. Hornet spray will do for everything. Yeah. Yeah. Pack of the Dante. killer bees. Bless it. And then the, uh, the... Two, two shotguns, Dante. Dante, do you have those with you right now? Eha. Nope. <laughs> Blue tarps and fear from Chef Boyardee. Silver Moose Stalker, yeah. Yep. Tim Sarve. Oh, no, yeah, Bob you throw Bob. a can of Chef Boy ID at them, they're gonna go running. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Somebody sent me some Chef Boy RD thing the other day, which you know, let's set the record straight on that Chef Boy RD. I can't stand the stuff, <laughs> I don't know how but, but you're it. eating it all the time, or this you talk about. Don't eat it. That's the thing. I keep a, uh, I keep a can in the house in case anybody breaks in, I can offer them that to eat and then they'll be dead by the time they finish half the can oh there you um, go but like those well, friend, friend oh, yeah you know. i mean nobody wants to even know what that what people so it looks like tim showed up late because he's complaining that bob is not here yeah no it, bob it wasn't our plan you yeah. know yeah. yeah me and Did bill just found out minutes through. before the show oh. that bob wasn't able to make it so yeah. and, and bob's dropped in so hopefully we will he's see trying. him. He's trying. He's yeah, yeah. probably running around yep. the hotel trying to find some internet. Internet signal that'll work. Yep. Well, I told him get out of the hotel room, go down to the lobby, and yeah, or um, just step outside in Atlanta. It's probably a little warmer right, than it is here. Right. He's in Macon, Georgia. Yeah, yeah. That's all you ate at Booth Bay a few weeks yeah. ago. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> and okay. for those wondering, last Saturday when uh, when John took out the RV again, it was eighty one in Central Massachusetts. Right. Right. Sunday it dropped to low fifties, but right. Saturday was absolutely a, a gorgeous day. Yeah. Oh, I know so, what you're saying. Uh, it, it was beautiful, but it yeah. start. It was going to be getting cooler on Sunday. 
Yeah. And I think we got Sunday. We got was Sunday rain, Bill, or was Mo no Monday yes. was the rainy day. S Sunday it rained Sunday. as well. That's right. So it bit, started yeah. raining at about 10 a.m. and it just didn't stop until Monday night. We had about two and a half inches in Central Mass. Yep. Yeah. It, yeah. it came down. But the interesting thing on that trip back on Sunday, no Saturday, uh, again we went to end up going to a football game down in Yale, uh, at in New Haven, Connecticut. Awesome. And, on the way back, we stopped at a restaurant and I was tired. And I said, you know what? Uh, my wife had mentioned when you stop at rest areas, there's some real characters that get out of their cars, especially if they're on a big interstate highway. So I said, well, let's just stop at the rest area in Sturbridge on the way back. And I had just eaten a large, uh, it was great chicken parm. The restaurant was called uh, Francesco's Restaurant in Bloomfield. If you uh -huh. like chicken farm, really good. Um, and I said, I'm just going to take a little nap. That was at 7.30. I woke up at 12.22 a.m. Oh. And my wife said, well, we might as well stay here. So we camped at the uh, Sturbridge Rest Area. <laughs> on the Mass but, Pike? Or, uh, on the Mass Pike. Yeah. But ironically, because it was Saturday night, we didn't have to compete with the trailer trucks. Yeah. It'd be pretty oh, nice. <clears throat> I used to work at that Howard Johnson's back in the day. Back and in it the was yeah. Howard yeah. Johnson's. Yeah. Assistant, that was Howard Johnson. assistant manager for the restaurant. Yeah. <laughs> and so then, Bernie, uh, you you yeah. meet some interesting people popping through uh, there. Bernie, tell us about your uh, your recuperation. How are you doing? Wow, you know, uh, I'm glad you asked. I appreciate that. Things are going pretty well. It's been, it'll be a month tomorrow morning. Uh, and I'm going to meet with my doctor. But it, it looks like I'm going to be you know, doing really well. So um, I'm about almost where I was before surgery, meaning the amount of pain that I'm going through and everything is that, um, you know, this, it is what it is. Physical therapy is going gangbusters. I think the biggest thing I could share with people is, you know, don't be a slacker. Like if you go through something like this, just do the, do the, the exercises you're supposed to do, you know, take the pills if you need to take them and ice it when you need to, but get out there and, and do the work. It yep. makes all the sense. Yeah. Yep. You know, it's funny. One thing um, about our audience, they're not afraid to speak their mind when we come up with a controversial topic. And um, the controversy is that this topic was supposed to be RVing in 2024, RV trends, technology, campground glamping, uh, EV RVs. And Jerry reminded us that we haven't yet talked about our, our <laughs> You know, it's like when you have a guest on and you don't bring them on until 20 after seven. But, you know, one thing about um, living in the Northeast is that you really do have a camping season. Yeah. And, you know, there's an end to it and a beginning to it. And there's a period of time in the middle that you kind of, um, you know, slow down and then plan for the next year. Um, let's ask our audience, do you have any interesting trips planned? For next year and um, speaking of people that had interesting trips planned Audrey Foley and her husband Bob are in I think they were in Key West tonight or last night but they're on a six-week trip they're gonna be our guests when they get back here and tell us all about it but anybody got any big things lined up for uh, 24 or are you getting a new unit or uh, anything along those lines so just tell us and then we'll uh, We'll continue. Well, Dante's saying he's in Daytona, so not at home at this point. Right. And thank you very much, uh, Don and Pat, uh, for the prayers. Uh, appreciate that. It's all it's all part of the process, right? You just say your prayers in the morning and, and help your day go better. Um, you know, you bring up a good point, because when I meet customers, when it's off season, yeah, they've already planned out in their mind what they're going to do next year. You know, people, if you're not in camping season, you're in the planning camping season. So it's all, the mind is still in the same place. Hmm. Interesting. Now, Walter says he's going to the Tampa RV show. That's in January. It's actually, it's before the, before the Boston show this year. And, um, you know, Walter, one thing you may want to do is um, I'm going to be over on the West Coast. We're attempting to head to Quartzsite for the first time, which means I want to, talk to Tony Barthel about hooking up with him out there, but you may want to, um, I don't know if Donna goes to that show with you, 
hook up with Zagami, go, go there on media day and uh, do some videos. And um, you also get to go through all the units before the general public gets there. So Walter, it's that might be something much, that you, you yeah. might want to. Uh, much lighter attendance on media day. Oh yeah. I mean, it's great because I'll tell you this, the Tampa show last year on the first day open to the general public, you couldn't walk. And Bob mm -hmm. and I got um, golf carts to go around in, but we had to go very slow. People kept cutting out in front of us, uh, all that stuff. So um, anyway, who else we got here? Talking so it about looks things. like uh, Don and Pat have a good plan for December. They're heading back to Athens, Texas for the NRVTA. Uh, it's a training. It sounds like it's a training thing, right? And they're going to be looking forward to meeting all the new students. So yep. that's fantastic. National RV Training Academy. Excellent. So, that is a yep. great, great. Tim event. says. Tim says our sales have still been steady considering time of year and decline in the sales demand. But Tim, you got some brand new units in. Um, tell us how the um, people are looking at those and and what they're saying about the new units. You got some pretty interesting. Yeah. Yeah, what's most popular right now, Tim? Let's see. Yeah. Right now, it looks like we're selling the Safari and giving it up. Wow. Safari, Here's, that's an older motorhome, correct? Yep, yep. That is a tank that he has. That's that's a very reliable unit for him for all those years. Um, Jerry, you're just, you're just, you've done it all or you got health issues or what's going on? Tell us uh, why you may be giving it up. Um, at least of owning your unit. But Jerry, would you ever consider renting a unit for um, short trips to do that? Looks like Dante's been all over Kingdom Come. Let me see if I can figure out all these uh, state abbreviations. We went from Maine to Pennsylvania to Ohio to Wisconsin, Indiana, Illinois, Tennessee, Georgia, Florida. Stayed in a couple of loves. Loves? Yep. And what's, what's that? What's a love? Okay. But, but it's a... Yeah. Trekker and Rust area. Oh, know, we okay. finally got one in New England on uh, Interstate 84, just north of Hartford. Yeah, uh, Route 7, Exit 71. Yep. All right. Yeah, because they have a billboard in Worcester. But now, interesting, on the other show that we do called... Uh, Camper Report oh, Show? Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> yeah, you the, for, the two people that don't do that show. Yeah. Um, we did a story this week that Loves is opening several... Uh, 11, if you will, um, virtual campgrounds that are all automated and some have 30 and 40 spots and they have all the amenities that are there, but not like a KOA with, you know, heavy staffing. Uh, so you go in, it's, it's all automated. And what I have the Oscar or something and, you know, type, yep, yep, swipe sure. the card and stay over. Yeah. I have uh, stayed not stayed, but observed one of the loves RV hookups. Okay, not a campground, but a hookup at their full service truck stops right out just this east of Cleveland where they had eight or 10. I think I did a report on that. You did, long. yeah, a couple months but ago. What it all boils down to is um, there are people that are travelers and not necessarily campers. So they have no need for a pool. They have no need for a shuffleboard. They have no need for a playground for kids or grandkids or anything like that. They're just moving from one part of the country to the other. And um, again, they want to get off the highway where it's quiet. Uh, but interestingly, the good part about the, the love spots is that they are right off the highway, but they've buffered them around mount, around hillsides so that you don't get the same noise. Oh, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That you would. Yeah, the one in Hartford is raised up or elevated because it's on that little bit of a hill. And uh, it gets really quiet there. And Dante's saying, safe place to stay. Yep. Now, Walter's got this strategically figured out. You can tell he's an engineer. Look, look at Walter. Look at Walter. He's, we he's love got Walter. The, he's okay. actually, you know, it's been how many months now since he sold the unit? Because we, we talked about that here on the show. <laughs> And, yeah, he's uh, doing the math, man. He's looking to figure out all symptoms. Yep. So uh, he's so got go the ahead, whole read, idea. Read it out there, Bernie. You want to read it? Or you want? Oh, to read sure. It? See if I can get through it. Hoping the market is soft as we look to purchase. As we look to purchase, Camping World revenue down twelve percent, profit down eleven percent. Used vehicle units plus ten point nine percent. New vehicle units 
minus 21%. Average selling price used minus 5.2, new minus 5.7, closing two stores, one distribution center floor plan interest cost 108.9%. So he thinks he's got a great deal coming from... Uh... Uh, They're going to be something you'll be they'll be paying you to buy one of those, Walter, <laughs> using your calculations for sure. So good luck on all of that. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to roll back a little bit because Jerry had a really interesting comment of why he stopped using his motorhome. Uh, I was working to support the coach, but I'm not working now. So we'll use up our KOA points and cabins. In other words, he, he, the only reason he was working at all is support his habit of owning that <laughs> safari. Okay. Okay. So that brings up, brings up a very good point, which we'll get into right after we have this mid season break, mid season, the mid show <laughs> mention, um, Bernie, there we go. Thank you so much again. Thanks to our friends at Seacoast RV, uh, crop park models, which I think in elevation, they have some unbelievable designs like at elevation, they have Anderson windows, uh, real appliances, real furniture, uh, real two by fours, you know. Uh, and again, I think they're one of the best values in the RV industry. And then we've got our Winnebago product. It looks like that's a Travato right there, which um, I wanted. They've, they've totally revolutionized Bernie. I think you'll agree with me. They've total that particular brand totally revolutionized the class B category. Oh, yeah. It, it opened up a whole different aspect of the market, you know, for yeah, sure. Yeah. Brought in some people that would never consider RVing before. Yep, uh, you know, Winnebago's always doing that. They're innovating, creating products that are very unique, and, you know, attracting, understanding where the market is going and, and showing yeah. up and being there for them. So, yep, yep. Or um, creating the market and having people follow them, too. That's yeah, cool. it's like, hey, there's new products out. Let's all jump on. Yep. But, you know, uh, Tim's got a lot to say. We asked that question, what's selling oh, best? Oh, Oliver Travel Chills, yep. Yeah, I yeah so the intech.com retail sold orders in dealer stock, Stockcraft as well as stock units, and last but not least, all the new product that he just brought in, the Oliver Travel Trailer, is official. So congratulations, Tim, of having a very good fall. Uh, Boston Show is coming. Yes, I'm going to be there. Um, I'm going to be off of injured reserve, and I'm going to be there with my bells on, and and uh, politely competing with Tim, but I hope I get a chance to meet him face to face because he's always been very engaging, and I appreciate that when I'm on. That was the team at last that year's when we went live. Year. We did the live show there. Right. Hopefully, we'll be doing that again on the Saturday morning opening thing there. Yep, that was it, Bill. Thank yeah. you so much. Uh, we, we should tell Bill. We should we should tell our audience. Bill has been. Um, mostly spending time in the background, but he's like our producer extraordinaire. Bill, tell us what you do in your real life and um, actually how we bumped into you because, uh, oh, oh, and then you have to tell about Zagami uh, driving the bike. the bike into the wall. <laughs> so the background is creating and running events. And okay. I had been uh, running an electric bike test track program. And we had the request at the 20... 17 or maybe it was 2018 Boston RV show to put in a small electric bike test track at the auto show side of it. This is back when the auto show was still co-located with the RV show. And we had a Winnebago display, nicely carpeted. And our little test track turned out that uh, it really wasn't a test track. You could just get on the bike maybe and sit. But yes. Mr. Zagami took it behind the curtain and decided to take it for a ride behind all the crates and everything and, and took off up the corridor. And then we don't see him again. And John and I are standing there. It's like, where did he go? <laughs> and then finally the head pops up from around the corner and he'd wiped out with the oh, uh, the e-bike. When he yeah. got up, dusted himself off and rode it back, uh, you know, having a good time. He but, might have uh, walked it back out, Bill. He might have walked it back. He yes, might have walked it back. It was fun. We were doubled the over. We were we doubled didn't see over any visible wounds, but I looked back and I saw him on the ground. Yeah, it was. Uh, he oh said, my goodness. Yes. I, well, I accused him of, of hitting the wall, but he said that it was that he um, slipped on the slippery concrete floor. Right. 
which it is, is why back there. I wouldn't go yes. back there with wet shoes. Either. Which is why right. we would never run an indoor bike test track without putting down rubber mats. But it was crazy, and uh, yeah, we had a couple of things. We had the um, uh, the big wheels that had electric bike motors attached. Kids, big wheels. And uh, the company that did it, a group of MIT engineers, and they took them on to the second floor of the building where there was no people. And oh. we're racing them from one end of the building to the other. Oh. And uh, oh, yeah, in those hallways. Locking, yeah, in the hallways upstairs. What could and go locking wrong? Them up. <laughs> they locked it up at, at, to see, you know, where could you get the tires to smoke on the carpet? And you could. Turns out that um, the security in the building had cameras on everywhere. And they knew exactly what was going on. They came down to our program and said, uh, yeah, no can do. This is not going to continue here, guys. And, uh, yeah, it was an interesting one. And now we see that Walter will not be at the Boston show. Yeah, well, we, right. we need to make perfectly clear that there is a Boston show, but Walter won't be at it. Because if yeah. you read that quickly, it says there's no, yes, Boston, it says the other one. Year no Boston show for him. Because Walter couldn't make it, so they're yeah. Well, just gonna cancel what the show. are the dates yeah, for the shows? Like, show. the, like the next couple of days later, right? So it's like they're back to back this year. Twenty five through twenty eight of January. Yeah, which means I can actually get my Florida trip in on the fourteenth, which is what I was hoping yep. to figure out. Yeah, twenty five through twenty eight. Awesome. Yep. We'd love to go to the Boston show, but we can't afford and really don't want to go back from Texas in January. But you know what? I just got a note today. Um, from Southwest with with super low fares, and I'm able to fly from Phoenix to Boston for $114 one way. So wow. that was a great price. And they're going to hitchhike from there to Athens, Texas. I guess is that what you're saying? You know what? I don't. <laughs> hey, Hawes, where is Athens? Because we're coming through Texas on I-10, and we're going down to Gavel Galveston, and then across the state on I. -10. 10. Um, I don't know if that's near you guys or what, but Tony, I don't know if you're still here, but we need to hook up in Quartzsite. Okay. Oh, now, it's Walter's birthday weekend. Birthday First, weekend. You don't want to mess with that. Time out. What is this deal with birthday weekends? Hey, uh, mine is the, my, mine's January 27th. We'll be uh, there doing a, a live show the day before. Birthday weekend. I, my birthday is January 10th. I worked the Boston show like every 10 time years in a row during yeah. that weekend. Yeah. yeah. And you get a free cupcake from Campers Inn. Yeah, for, I ain't getting nothing. For doing <laughs> and Walters is the day after mine. So. Yeah. 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 Okay. So I want to know where this birthday weekend stuff started and what happened to birthday. Because birthday weekend is, is almost like a. Uh, you know, contradiction in terms, is it not? Well, it's like the kids. You I know, wonder, when you're three or four, they always had long... It you know, sounds like Northern time. European, but he's really acting like an Irishman right now when he right. needs a whole weekend to celebrate his birthday. And, yeah. and yeah. when they have bachelor parties, they used to be at, like, some cheap bar right. where they either get an old oh. film or or an old something else. <laughs> now they go away to, to like... <laughs> Bermuda. Bermuda. Yes, Bermuda. exactly. Yeah, yeah, they go golfing in, in Puerto Rico, Rico yep. or whatever. Yeah. yeah. I know my nephew was going. It would have cost him an extra thousand dollars because he was yes. in the wedding. So, so oh, there's your only birthday weekend. Yeah. Here's your Athens answer. Athens is about 75 miles southeast of Dallas. If you want to come this way, I'll cover your site at the Texan RV Park. In I'll have to look at that. See, we're in a convoy of about 75 units wow that we're going from tallahassee to quartzite over i think uh 14 days that's a that's a trip it all started last year uh it's 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 2016 miles so the person who's running it must be an engineer because he figured out he didn't want to travel more than 200 200 200 miles a day because you don't want to spend 10 days drive, you know, 10 hours a day driving. So he's got all these cool places lined up and um, a couple campgrounds. We stay at twice, you know, two nights. So 
Um, hey, Tony has has a really interesting comment, and I want him to clarify that a little bit more. Um, we can quite literally run our AC on battery power in our Rockwood RV's Mini Light 2205S with the power package. So this what is back to the discussion. Talking about here? Yeah, this is back to that discussion about not running the generator overnight. Right, right, right. But yeah, I'm just wondering 20, because I didn't know Rockwood away. had such a package that you had enough lithium. I mean, you would have to have probably what three, four hundred amp hours to get through a a five hour period to run an AC like that. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure. I would no. think it would use quite a bit of uh, power. But yeah. maybe Tony can clarify without taking up too much. Yeah. Now, Jerry brought up something earlier. He said, I used to work to to pay for my RV, but now I'm not working. I'm going to get rid of the RV and use his KOA points in a cabin. Let me ask our audience, um, do you like the campground experience enough that you would stay in the campground when you only have your vehicle with you, but you don't have your camper with you? Um, would you stay at, um, you know, when you say KOA cabins, they are generally the rustic cabins, but so many of the other parks now have these luxurious park models with, um, you know, all the amenities, you know, two or three TVs, bunk beds. Um, you know, we stayed at one in Myrtle Beach last year and had the big TV outside and had the gas fire pit, everything. Would you consider going to a campground when you didn't have your camper? Let us know if that's an issue for you. And uh, tell me what you think about glamping. Would you ever rent one of those tents and hope that a big bear didn't come around nearby? You know, there's, there's a lot of people are loving those tents. Uh, Tony got back to us um, four to seven hours or so. The problem is the inefficiencies of the RV AC systems. I, I want either a Truma Adventa or a Furion Chill Cube. I'm wondering what the BTU rating is on those units and what the BTU rating is on his Rockwood. I mean, if it's a 13.5, it's amazing that it's getting as, as many hours as, you, as he's getting, for sure. So, John, you did an interview uh, earlier this year with uh, David Kors from the Glamping Expo program, and uh, they do have actual air conditioners in some of those tents tents right yeah so that you're actually yes, in you're a tent right. but you're a running power and an ac yeah yeah you know it's funny when i think of the glamping tents i think of the ones up in maine um what's that place that koa owns um terra something uh, uh it's right outside of bar harbor um it's a koa owned property but you'd never know you can't take your rv into it I know they don't like RVs because I took mine into it to do a video with them and had trouble backing out. Wow. <laughs> so uh, what's it called? Oh, man. It'll come to you the five uh, minutes after eight yeah. when the show's oh, over. No, no. Um, but anyway, I, I no, It's really all glamping? That, that campground's all glamping? It's all glamping. It used to be a, a traditional campground, and they closed it for two years. And, um, you know, it's all glamping. Very similar to Auto Camp down in Cape Cod. Jerry would not be familiar with that because he's down there. Um, you know, which they got, have about a hundred air streams that are permanently mm. fixed, built in. Yeah. There. But they're getting three, four hundred dollars a night in the summertime. Oh, glamping! It, there's definitely money. I mean, that is oh, yeah, like a high end hotel. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Without the overhead. Now, the those building. those tents have sinks and toilets in them, too? Or do you go out to the little outhouse on the prairie? Uh, many, many do. Yeah, many, many do, do, but not all do. Right, not it's all. And and there's, there's a variety of things. Those some of them are yurts. Data. Yeah, some of them yeah. are a one-room tent yeah. that has all the amenities. Uh, the, the glamping side, um, it really doesn't fit the category as to what we're talking about here as typical camping. Okay. And uh, yeah, Jerry's saying that, yeah, some of these are yeah off Terramore. of uh, batteries. Terramore. 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 Yeah. Yep. yeah, yeah. And then there's ah. under canvas, which is up there as well. Um, but just wondered if any of our folks here uh, have an interest in the glamping aspect of going RVing. Because last year when we went to Myrtle Beach, we drove our car um, 
but I didn't want to go through the hassle of, you know, uh, in January driving between Christmas and New Year's, what it was, um, knowing that I couldn't depend on the weather and not wanting to um, winterize, unwinterize, winterize, and deal with traffic on I-95, which is bad enough, let alone in bad weather. Remember a couple of years ago, um, Christmas week, the there frost was that down there. giant 15 mile, where the heck was it? It was down in, in Virginia. Uh, it yep, just the snowstorm that just shut everything down. Yep, yep. shut everything down. Didn't didn't they just have something like that just last week? I forget where it was, but yeah, there was like a several hundred cars kind of. Col- oh, there was a. There's one in Minnesota. Smoke, it was a yeah. yeah it, was, it was a smoke issue. Yeah, different yeah. kind of thing. Right, 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 right. Yeah, the Virginia one was that the snow hit in that one area and. Yep. They were not ready for it, and you could have been in your RV. You probably would have been the only one that would have been able to stay warm overnight. Yep. Yeah. Oh, look at yeah. Walter! Always up on everything. Big accident on I eighty in Pennsylvania today from the snow. I eighty or eighty one, Walter. Uh, could be either. Oh, well, yeah, um, they're both there. Yep. Yep. Eighty and eighty one. Um, I'm not a big fan of the interstates in Pennsylvania, by any means. Oh, and I, yeah. go, I go on 78 a lot to avoid going through Washington. We'll take 287 to 78 across um, Scranton, Allentown, not Scranton, but Allentown, Bethlehem, and Easton, go to Harrisburg, and then down 81 to avoid that baloney. But, um, right. you know, it's, it's just crazy. Hey, let's go um, in a few minutes we have left, talk about that controversial topic. And I'm talking about electric RVs. Um, we know electric cars are not ready for prime time. How do I know? I own one. Okay. An electric RV? No, you own an electric car. I own an electric car. I don't. Yeah, own- and you figured out every single charging station in eastern and central Massachusetts that's not working. And right. You know what? There's quite a bit of the. The fact is. The cars themselves are fine. They give a great ride. Um, one thing you need to keep in mind if you have an electric vehicle, you'll go through your tires twice as fast as if you have a conventional vehicle because the car is heavy. Know, heavy. So it goes through tires, but the infrastructure is not yet there, um, but will be fixed dramatically. Not totally, but dramatically when Tesla opens up their chargers to mm-hmm. non Tesla vehicles through either um, converters or adapters. Right. Um, but has anybody, did anybody here look into an electric RV at one time when they, when they were highly touted when they first came out? Um, well, I, while we're waiting for answers on that, um, I was just looking, uh, I think, Ford just cut $16 billion worth of research on the EV program. Uh, They're going to reduce their costs. BMW just built a four-door i8 M series. Big, huge thing. Looks like a a Rolls Royce almost. Um, And it gets 291 miles on a charge, but the charge is 11 hours. Yeah. Yeah. 11 hour well, charge. It, it can't be at 11 hours at a level level one charge a level three charger uh, that must the be highest a, that that's what bmw that is, is saying. Yeah. yeah that that has to be a mid-tier charger or a home charger or something like that right. but well, no, it's, it's, that, it's yeah. so but it's, it's it's so it's such a heavy it's inefficient you, it's the, very inefficient you could not yeah, do i think the batteries are a crazy amount yeah. of batteries in that car yeah, yeah. The, the other thing is it it's um the dealers are not ready for it. They don't like to sell them. The sales reps don't like to sell them. And, um, you know, well, I, I think hybrid's the way to go still. Uh, Walter, yep. 48% of electric car owners will replace place them with fossil fuel engines with the next car purchase. Wow. Hydrogen yep. fuel cell. I think that's a brilliant thing that needs to be developed a little bit further. Yep. I heard some stuff about sodium batteries recently that have a higher a level of... Uh, efficiency. Electric cars, we do not have the resources to support it. 
Tim, yeah. Tim, Tim, you're absolutely right. And yeah. um, the thing is, the cars themselves are fine. Like I say, they run great. Um, but if you can't get power to them, what good is it? Yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah. Walter's on, on board with me. Mercedes takes 11.25 hours of charge on a level, At a level two. two. Level yeah. Two. yeah. Okay. Level two, you, you don't want a, a level two is the kind that um, you use at home. Yeah. Okay. You know, and that's even up from level one. But uh, the batteries themselves yeah, are going to need to be replaced. So my son right. bought a used Chevy Bolt. Bolt, okay. And yeah. um, that one had still a recall on the battery, which finally he got the battery notification. It used to get 235 miles on a charge. Gets the new battery for free. Value price was $17,900 to replace Ooh. that battery. Had he had to pay cash. And was getting just short of 400 miles range. Lives in That's Davenport, not. Florida. Same place as uh, uh, Walter. And um, he no longer has that range anxiety. Because it is one of those things that you have to look first. Am I going to drive to Tampa? Can I make it home? And if you right. can't make it home, you better have a couple of different apps to be able to track where you get the charger. And yeah, the level three, the Tesla chargers, 45 minutes is reasonable. But uh, 11 right. and a quarter hours just is far too much. That just yeah. makes no sense at all. The other thing is this, um, regarding electric RV to stay on topic here for a second, which we don't normally do, but that's fine. <laughs> um, the back of the vehicle is made by the RV manufacturer. Same as a Class C. Okay, The front of the vehicle, the chassis, is made by, in, in the case with Winnebago, made by Ford. Um, when Winnebago adds all the weight to the back of it, it creates drag on the battery. The other thing that people don't understand with the EVs is that if you're going uphill all the time, you're using more battery. If you've got wind resistance, you're driving into heavy winds, all you have to do, and I found that out by driving on uh, out to uh, Elkhart, um, where I left Worcester with 90%, I got to Albany, and I was supposed to have 40%, I only had 20%. But from the time you leave Springfield till the time you get to Albany, you're basically going uphill and up the grade. Way. Yep. Okay. And if you've traveled down the New York Thruway, you know that if you're coming from Buffalo to Boston, you generally have a very strong tailwind, which means if you're going in the opposite direction, you have a very strong headwind. So with those things in mind, you know, headwinds cut down on range and range is determined um, you know, by an engineer, <laughs> not necessarily somebody who's been out on the road. So um, we want to thank our audience, right, Bernie? Thank our audience. Yeah, absolutely. You know, yeah, and you're gonna. It's been wonderful. I'm glad Bob gave me a ring, and I was I was happy to help any way I can. Um, and I think I'm gonna be on next week too because Bob's gonna be in Vegas. So yeah. John and yeah. I are gonna be running the show. Yes, yeah. we'll if you can find it, you can find it. He'll be there. On. We go. We oh. found him. Oh, hey, there he is. <laughs> yeah, he's still stiff there. He's still <laughs> stiff. But oh, uh, you have you have to do uh, Seacoast one more time, bud. Yep. So special thanks to our friends at Seacoast RV, proud sponsor of RV in New England. They have crop models. They have Winnebago models. They have elevation models. They have a great store. They have propane. They have three dogs running around inside the store, and the store is one of the nicest ones you'll see in New England. Grading family fun on Route One Seacoast RVs. Special thanks to Bernie and Bill, who who were called into action about five minutes before showtime. You know, so, the audience has been outstanding tonight. They've been interject, interjecting all these comments. It's been yep. so much fun dealing with everybody. Thank you so great. much. Thank you to our audience, the best in the world. Have a great night, everybody. It's John, Bernie, and Bill saying we'll see you. And, hey, let's do what? Go. Come on, guys. Let's go. Go RVing. RVing. Cool. Thanks, everyone. This edition of RVing in New England was a presentation of the New England RV Dealers Association. Thanks for watching, and be sure to like us on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram.